Welcome to the Spiritual Development Channel. I'm Nasi Ashiro, and I know it's late, but tonight I was thinking about something. I was thinking about the evolution of the human diet based on science and the Bible. It's okay to believe in evolution, microevolution. Microevolution suggests that there's adaptations that the humans or pro-humans went through in order to adapt to their environment. Now, this has got to be accepted by most people, and it's accepted by the Bible. And let me explain why. Adam and Eve weren't your typical humans. They were metahumans. They were created by God, and they lived in a horticultural uh, uh, environment, a horticultural society. Everything was beautiful and plush. Everything grew, wild fruits, carbohydrates were all there for the humans to enjoy. Until man acted immoral and would cast it out the garden. Into a world where humans became the antithesis of going against nature. Where the whole human existence now is to subdue nature, control nature, and manipulate nature in order for their own personal survival. And even destroying some elements of nature. Nature stops producing almost completely, becomes an arid, vast wasteland, leaving humans to work by the sweat of their brow, which the Bible says, forcing them into an agricultural lifestyle where they're almost manipulating the earth in order to produce, in order for them to survive. Also, humans went from being naked to being clothed with figs, then to be enclosed with human or animal skin, which suggests or implies that there was a climate change. So let's think about that, right? A climate change. All this suggests that the original Adam or Adamic man, we are not. In fact, the word for men is anashim in Hebrew. That word anashim has a root word of enosh, which Enos is the third descendant from Adam on the line of Seth. And it also means, Enos means sickened or weakened. We are sickened and weakened men based off of the Adamic part, semi-divine individual we know. During this time, Adam made the diet of fresh wild fruits, which we know as carbohydrates and migrated out of this vast land because of the corruption that happened and went into a place where food was scarce. But science believed after this, men became scavengers. And why do they believe this? They believe this because men have a keen sense to smell carcasses when they're dead, and they have very strong livers. So this suggests that humans became actual scavengers eating off of carcasses before they rot in order to survive. Now the Bible suggests this in many ways and supports the suggestion because there's prohibitions in the Levitical law against eating the blood, eating meat that died of itself, and eating meat that was torn from another animal. So then you see the evolution of the human, right? So the adaptations in the human genes starts to produce more proteins. Proteins is what allows human to have a high protein diet, which is similar to carnivores. So now humans can eat more protein and take a higher protein and fatty diet. And this will help them go through times where vegetation was scarce and the weather didn't produce food. All right. So let's just keep it in mind. We're almost done here. Earlier in the species, we developed a cooking technique. Now... This cooking technique allowed us to eat starches. Starches were almost impossible for us to eat, but the cooking technique softened up the starches and made meat more digest, more, more, more for us to able to digest. We can digest it more. And now we go from a carb diet to a high protein and fat diet. These protein and fat diets is what allowed our brains to develop faster. But the Bible also supports this because the next thing you start to see in Cain and Abel and their sacrifice that they're cooking. One is cooking from the flock and the other is cooking from his crops. So you see these starches and you see 
these meats starting to be developed in the Bible as an evolution of humans eating. We see the adaptation of AMI-1 genes. And what is an AMI-1 gene? AMI-1 gene is being produced in the human body so we can digest amylose, which is a starch at a higher level. Amylose is similar to cellulose. Humans cannot digest cellulose. And what is cellulose? Cellulose is what you probably see as grass and many of your plants around you that animals can digest because of the microbiomes that's inside of their guts. Humans cannot digest that. So they can digest wheat and starches in the form of bread. And this is why he said, the book says, and you shall eat bread by the sweat of your brow. Now bread comes into the human diet, right? So we talk about the brains becoming bigger because of the protein and starch diet. Now, does the Bible support the brains becoming bigger? Absolutely. If you look at the Neanderthal, which if you go in my old videos, I explained to many people that Neanderthal is represented by Cain in the Bible. Now, Neanderthals have bigger brains than Homo sapiens, but Neanderthals, because they ate more meat, they developed a bigger brain quicker, which the Bible suggests by implying that the son of Cain was Enoch. Now, out of the lineage, Cain had Enoch before Seth had Enoch showing that their brains develop quicker and faster. And Enoch means education and intelligence. This is something just to think about. So the human diet evolved and the Bible supports the scientific theories. And not only did it support it, it actually is the foundation of their theories. So stay tuned to the Spiritual Development Channel. You get more information, more knowledge, more understanding, and short feeds. And we help you walk wake up to an enlightened life and understand how to become a better person and a stronger person. But the Bible is giving you life and helping you understand how things develop in the older world.